In this set of lectures, we will find out about system programming and mainly about uh, how to deal with the file system, so files and directories. Okay, so we need some picture of how there are layers of software between the hardware and the user. So at the core of the system, of any system is the hardware, and then there's layers of operating system software around it. And above the operating system software is user programs, um, such as C programs that we might write ourselves, or uh, things like even like LS, for example, or shell scripts. Those are all kinds. Those are all user programs. So if you were to take a look at a more detailed look at these layers, this is what we would see. We would see the very top or the very outside layer. We would see user programs underneath that some layer, a layer of uh, input-output management. So we've seen this with input-output redirection, for example, in uh, shell scripts, but also it can be file I.O., uh, which depends on device drivers. So device drivers for hard drives, device drivers for, let's say, a network connection, things like that. So these are all um, layers of software, and it's because of these different layers that uh, Linux can be so flexible. So underneath the device drivers is more hardware related things like the CPU, memory management, uh, things like that. And at the very lowest level is the hardware, actual, the actual CPU, the actual RAM chips, and uh, actual devices like hard drives. Okay, so there's the only thing you want to get out of this is that there's layers of software above the hardware and we will go through some of these layers to, to actually do some file IO which is the main thing that we'll be looking at in, in this chapter. So at the very lowest level of software is the kernel, the operating system kernel. System resources are managed by this kernel. What exactly is this kernel? The kernel is the core of the operating system it's a group of C programs, so it's not just one single C program, it's just a, whole, it's a bunch of programs that interact, work together to control and monitor all the user programs and system resources. So it manages system resources, interacts with the user programs, so on. Kernel programs are run in a privileged mode on the CPU, so this is actually a, a physical uh, bit that's set in the CPU. Uh, in Linux, we only use two modes, that is um, user mode or kernel mode. In Windows, there are four rings or four levels, and you can go between them. So, very simple um, use in Linux, uh, although it is something that's set right in the hardware, in the CPU. So, it's a little flag that's set when you go from user to kernel mode. So what does the kernel include? It includes a memory manager to manage uh, memory. There's a lot to it. We won't get into hardly any of it. Uh, process manager we will get into in the next few weeks. Then there are the device drivers. They work at the kernel level. Things like the graphic card interface, graphics card interface, and hard other hardware interfaces. So though all these things are in the kernel, um, we will just look at very simple details of some of these things, not really a whole lot. You just want to be aware that there are all these levels, they're all in the kernel. So for our purposes, this is all we need to know right now, that when you write a, a C program, for example, something like this, you're in user space, you, all of these functions are in user space. Let's say we call a low-level read function to read, let's say, 100 bytes from a file that we have opened into some buffer area B. So this compute function is just one of our functions that sits completely, let's say, in user space. But this read function sort of lives in uh, both user space and then a part of it is also in kernel space. And there is an interface where you switch from ex executing in um, user space and then you switch to kernel code and you execute this part of this read function in kernel space. So this there's a 
a barrier here which is there for security so you don't want to have all users run things in kernel space because they have privileges to erase everything erase things that for example belong to other users so there's a lot of security here to prevent users from doing the wrong thing so user space is restricted to the users program data and files the kernel space is sort of allows you to access system-wide resources of course you are um, all kinds of things are checked here when you go from user code to kernel code things like permissions and so on so now let's take a quick look at the types of files we will only look at uh, two things that is regular files and directories but you've probably heard this before that in Linux or in Unix in general everything is a file so for example a keyboard is thought of as being a file uh, a, fi a device file for example it would be a character special file a hard drive is considered to be a block special file that is you treat information as uh, coming in blocks typically like a kilobyte or four kilobytes links we will also look at those are um, um, uh, as we've seen before they're like shortcuts in windows um, there's two kinds and we'll look at the details of links FIFOs are a way for two different programs to communicate through a file and then sockets are a way for for two different programs on two different computers to potentially communicate over the network so these are all considered files although for this chapter for this uh, set of videos we will only look at regular files directories and links will be part of that okay so first we want to we should look at take a look at uh, the Unix file system I did a little bit of this earlier on when we looked at links but now we'll take a more detailed look so if you look at uh, uh, hard, uh, uh, hard drive the first 1024 block first 1024 bytes is considered a boot block and this this number will actually vary so it's not always 1024 but there's a boot block which is used to um, boot the device for if if this hard drive is used as a boot device following that is a super block which contains information about all the data blocks including a block which we will look at in this chapter which is and that's the inode block so is every hard drive will have a fixed number of inodes and this is just a big table and these things contain information about all the files so for example let's say we have an inode block that has um, 2000 entries it's typically much bigger but this would mean that you can only have up to 2000 files on this on this hard drive so of course usually the number is a lot bigger so it, but let's just say it's 2000 and that would mean that there are 2000 things 2000 entries in this inode block or this inode table and they will contain well, what's called metadata that is information about when the file was created uh, when it was last accessed the size of the file the exact location of the data blocks that constitute the, the contents of the file. So the contents of the file is are, are not stored in I, the inode block. It's stored here in the data blocks. But there are pointers, or yeah, I guess pointers would be the way to look at it, to the data block that tell you what the contents of any particular file are. So this is how data is organized, of course, now with uh, all kinds of different file systems. Not all of these things are used, but for in general this is the structure that's used in pretty much in most operating systems so Mac OS 10 Linux Unix and Windows also uses very similar structures okay so let's take a look at inodes inodes contain information about a, f a particular file and the disk addresses of the disk blocks for the contents of the file so the information in here contains a lot of information like for example the owner of the file the group that uh, this file is associated with type of file access time uh, time for modification uh, permissions are also in here and then finally you get a sort of a you can think of it as a pointer to 
the blocks where the actual data for that file is stored. Okay. So now let's take a look at links. Just take a quick look at links because it's uh, very interesting to look at uh, how links work with this structure. So remember, links are pointers to other files, so shortcuts. They can be either hard or symbolic links or soft links, as uh, some people like to call them. And you, we've used the ln command to make links between files. So some of the useful options for the ln command are minus s for symbolic link, which we've done. And you can use minus i in for uh, to run this link command in interactive mode. That is, you'll get you'll be asked to confirm: Do you want really want to do this? Yes or no? So on. So the two arguments to the link uh, command, uh, so the ln command, are source and destination. So source is the original file, and then the destination is the uh, shortcut or the copy that you want to make. And there's two ways to make them: um, hard links and then symbolic links. So without the minus s option, so remember in here we had the minus s option uh, uh, switch or option. Without that minus s option you just have two arguments source and destination. So the source is an existing file so it has an entry in this inode table or inode block so and one of the entries in so in that entry, sorry, there will be a data block address and this is what I'm not showing all the details of but you want to picture this in your mind that somewhere in this entry in this inode block for a particular file, there's one for each file and only a fixed number of files and a, a maximum number of files in any file, any hard drive. Somewhere in that entry you will have a data block address. So that's what I'm showing here with this arrow. So somewhere in here there's a source file and there's a data block address that points to the, where all the data for that file is stored. When you make a hard link, what you're doing is you're creating an entry in this inode table that will be called D destinations, whatever name you give here from the Linux for the ln command. What it'll have is an exact copy of all of this stuff here, plus a copy of the the disk block where the file starts. Okay, so what you do when you do a hard link is you copy this inode entry, you make a copy of it in here. Okay, so you can do this from a C program using the link function. So you can use the ln command at the command line or you can use the link function in a C program to do the same kind of thing. Now the difference between symbolic links and hard links that we just looked at is when we use the minus s command and we have we've done this a while ago what you do is you create a brand new entry which links which has as disk block address some other disk block which contains a pointer to this inode entry for the source. So you go from here, you have to go to the disk block to find out essentially the name of the file and all that's all this is. The name of the file will tell you how to find the inode entry and so this is a complete path name that's stored in this disk block it'll tell you how to find this inode entry which points you uh, through this um, sequence of links you eventually get to the actual thing that you're looking for the actual data and you can do this you can set up a symbolic link using ln minus s or if you want to do it within a C program you can use symlink it does the same thing Okay, so the important thing to know is that when you make a symbolic link, you're not making a copy of the inode table entry. You're creating a brand new entry which contains, which points you to a location on the file, brings you back into the inode table, then takes you to the actual data. So it's all these levels of indirection when you set up uh, links.